Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel once again read with me today I have come with another short story from this collection Grandma's bag of stories by Shudha Murthy. Let's start What's in it for me? Aja told Anand will you go fetch my clothes from the Dhobi? Anand was reading a book and said without looking up then what will you give me? Aja smiled and said I will give you nothing why should I give you anything? You are a part of the family. Anand looked up now. Oh, but, but that is not true in our house, he declared. Whenever my dad tells me to do some work, I ask for a reward and he gives it to me. Aja was surprised. Let me talk to your father. The joy of helping someone itself is a reward. This is not right. Dad is a big officer in a bank. Can he make mistakes? Asked Krishna with great surprise. He may be an officer in the bank, but at home he is your father and my son. And I will talk to him. If you go on like this, you will become like Mushika. What's a Mushika? Asked Sharan. As I looked around, um, there was no sign of Aji. Probably churning out some last minute masala powder for the mothers to take back with them. He looked pleased. Today I will tell you a story of a musika and what happens if you want to be paid for every little thing. Mushika the mouse walked jauntily down the road, whistling a happy tune to himself. There had been a storm earlier in the day which had got rid of the summer heat. He had just eaten a big juicy mango that had fallen in the storm so his tummy was full and he was as pleased as punch. On the road, he saw a twig, also fallen from the tree above in the storm. Now a mouse will store and keep anything, hoping it will be of use one day. So Musika picked up the twig in his mouth and set off. A little ahead, he met a potter. The potter was sitting with his head in his hands. Why? Because his oven had been drenched in the rain and now he did not have enough dry wood to light it again. How would he bake his pots and sell them? As the potter sat wailing in front of his house, Musika walked up and watched him for some time. Hush up, brother, he asked with the twig still clutched in his mouth. At first, the potter paid no attention to the strange talking mouse. Then when Mushika asked him again and again, he told the little creature why he was crying. Mushika nodded, kept the twig aside and said, See, this twig has dried in the wind and can be used to light your kiln. Light your kiln. I will happily give it to you, brother potter. But what's in it for me? The potter thought hard and deciding that a little mouse could not ask for much, said, I will give whatever you ask for. In a flash, Mushika replied, then give me that large pumpkin that is lying in the corner of the room. The potter was astonished. How can a mouse carry a pumpkin? Besides, he had been looking forward to the lovely pumpkin curry his wife would make for him that night. Choose something else, little mouse, he asked. But Mushika was a stubborn, the pumpkin for the twig or nothing. So the potter gave Mushika the pumpkin. The mouse was delighted. He had made a mighty human do what he wanted. He left the pumpkin near the potter's house, saying he would collect it soon and set off down the road again. Farther ahead, a milkman was sitting by his cows, shaking his head. What's up, brother milkman? asked a tiny voice. To his astonishment, the man saw a mouse with bright eyes peeping up at him. Sadly, he shook his head some more, then said, The storm scared my cows and they are refusing to give me milk. What will I sell today and what will my fa family eat? Spicy pumpkin curry if you want. Surely you are joking, my friend. I have 10 people at home. Where will I get a pumpkin large enough to feed everyone? Just walk back the way I came. You will reach Potter's house. Right beside that, I have left a pumpkin. That's mine and you can have it. But what's in it for me, brother? The milkman shrugged and said, whatever you want. 
Like the potter, he thought, what can a mouse want? Mushika said, then give me a cow. Are you mad? A pumpkin for a cow? Whoever has heard such a thing? It is that or nothing, my friend, replied Mushika firmly. So the milkman went and got the large pumpkin and gave one cow to the mouse. A big cow with large horns that listened to what he commanded. Mushika the mouse could not believe his luck. Off he went, seated on the cow, whistling another happy tune. When he stopped in front of a marriage hall. Why were people standing around looking sad and worried? They should be busy preparing for the marriage feast. Even the bride and groom were standing with long faces. What's up, brother groom? called Mushika, sitting atop his cow. The groom replied gloomily, There is no milk prepared, the wedding kheer. How will the wedding feast be complete without the dessert? Mushika grinned, Worry not, here take this cow. She is now happy and will give you milk. But what's in it for me, brother? The groom was very happy and said, Why? You can have whatever you want. You can eat your fill of the feast, sweets, pulao, fruits, whatever you heart desire. The mouse kept quiet and gave the cow to the wedding party. They milked the cow and had plenty of milk. There was a great wedding feast. After the party was over, the mouse replied in a flash, Give me your bride. The groom and everyone in the marriage party were astonished at the mouse's chick. The groom was about to give him a good whack when his you know, like when his newly wedded bride stopped him. You had given him your word that he could have whatever he wants. Let me go with him. I will teach him such a lesson that he will never try to carry off another human bride again. Her husband agreed, so off she went with the mouse. Mushika scrambled ahead, eager to show the bride his home. But what was this? Why was she walking so slowly? Hurry up, bride, he called. It is about to rain again. The bride replied, I am a human. I can't run as fast as you. Shumusika had to slow down. By the time they reached his home, which was a little hole under a tree, he was very hungry. Cook me a nice meal with lots of grain, he commanded. The bride nodded and said, of course. But where is the kitchen, the spices, the oil and the vessels? I am a human after all. I can cook only grains. The mouse realized he was in a real fix, having got this useless human back with him. Never mind, he shied, at least come inside the house. Oh, but how will I do that? Wailed at the bride. I cannot set even a toe inside that hole. It is so small. Where will I sleep tonight? You, how about under the tree? Musika suggested, pointing to another big tree nearby. No way, sneezed the bride. It will rain and I will get wet and I will catch a cold then a fever and I will need a doctor who will give me bitter medicines. Now she started wailing even louder. Shush, shush. Mushika comforted her thinking he should have agreed to eat his fill of the wedding feast instead of bringing this strange whiny woman back home with him. How about you stay in that temple veranda for the night? He suggested, pointing to a big temple across the road. Oh. But thieves and robbers will come there and try to snatch away my lovely jewels, cried the woman. Then suddenly she dried her tears and said, What if I call my friends Ram and Sham to protect me? Before Mushika could say anything, she whistled loudly and called Ramu Shamu. From nowhere, a big dog and cat appeared next to her and made as if to eat up Mushika. Oh, how he ran and shaved his life by jumping into the safety of this hole. The bride grinned and went back to her wedding feast with her faithful pets. As for Mushika, he had to go to sleep on an empty stomach that night. Tomorrow he shied, perhaps there will be another storm and went off to sleep. Thank you for being patient and listening to the whole story along with me. Please do like, share and comment. Let me know in the comment section do you like it or not. And if you have any suggestion for me that how can I improve my reading and how, what kind of stories I need to, you know, like uh, read out to you, uh, please do let in the comment section. And till then, stay happy and stay blessed and also stay tuned. Um, till then, 
Bye-bye. See you once again. Soon.